Well, I got this chunk of steel and it's about a third of the piece from a canister I welded together a couple weeks ago. And I figured today's a good day to mess around and see if I can draw this out and get a small blade out of it. Well, I'm going to start out by drawing this out a little bit on the press because it's a little more than a quarter of an inch thick. And it doesn't need to be anywhere near that because I'm aiming for about an eighth inch thick knife. So if I want a little bit thicker than eight in eighth inch and I can grind back to it. So that'll give us a little bit more length. This piece was only about six inches long to start with. And I drew it out to be a little bit more than ten. And if anybody is interested in seeing the actual billet be made, it was a piece of canister Damascus that I made a video for a couple weeks ago, so I'll go ahead and put a card up at the top to link to that. Now it's over to the anvil once we've got it kind of drawn out. Just sort of straightening out everything right now, and then I'll go and start trying to forge in uh, the handle part of the tang. I'm going to make this as a full tang knife. For that I'm using a little bit of a combination of the peen of the hammer and the horn of the anvil. If my anvil was heavier and mounted down better, I could probably do it all on the horn, but it's not a really good anvil, so the horn doesn't have a really good shape to it for it. I found the peen to be a lot easier to do. Always, every time you you pull it out, try and straighten it up. To get it, keep it straight all the way along. Otherwise, you wind up with a bunch of little places where it's all twisted or wrong or just bent a little bit, and you spend a lot more time straightening later. Once I got the handle pretty much the shape I want it to be. I'll do some grinding to profile. I'm going to turn around and grab it by that and put it back in the forge to shape the tip. Now, of course, forging in a tip like this makes it a little bit thicker on the end as you're kind of upsetting the steel back into it, so then you have to draw it back out. So we'll be doing that next, but I'm not actually planning on forging in bevels on this one. I'll go ahead and just let it about the thickness that I want. I'll forge in a little bit of a distal taper, but then I'll go back and grind it to get the bevels in it because that'll make it a lot easier to see the actual pattern of the springs that are inside this because not too many of them are on the surface now but if I grind down into it I think I'll be able to find some more of them and this is sort of forging in that distal taper I'm not really forging in the bevels. I'm 
then I get close, I'm going to go ahead and brush it off real good. I've got a lot of flux in my forge, so you might have noticed I've scraped it off on the edge of the anvil a couple times. But I don't want to forge that into the blade and have deep marks that I have to grind through. I have enough trouble with hammer marks from inexperience. I don't need to add scale and flux into the mix and mess it all up. And again, straightening, straightening, straightening. You can also use a vise to do some of this. That's pretty much the forged blade, or at least the forged blank for a blade. We'll move to the grinder. <laughs> and this is a, a fresh 40 grit belt. I'm going to do most of my profile work and bevels and kind of flatten off the sides all with this. And I'm dipping it in water just to keep it cool enough to handle. It hasn't been heat treated yet, so I don't have to worry about destroying a temper on it. Making sure I'm grinding through all the stuff on the spine, all the scale, down to fresh, clean metal. And then do the same thing on the sides. I'm going to use a wooden block to push it against it. Save my fingers a little bit of burns. Now something I noticed I was doing wrong while I was grinding, and I didn't really even notice it until I started watching the video, is that I pull past the end of the belt rather than pulling the knife off of the belt when it gets to the tip and I keep rolling my tips off like that and cutting the tips off the blade so I need to learn to stop doing that I need to learn to pull the knife away before the tip of it gets to the end of the belt this is establishing the the bevels. You'll notice I lift the back end of the block up a little bit and I'm pushing it in at an angle. Kind of using the block as a sort of angle guide. Bevel jig. Whatever you want to call it. And then I'll go to a 120 belt and try and get everything lined up along the length of the blade. Smooth out some of the big scratch marks. And after 120 we'll run up through a few different grits and then go to a, a scotch bright belt to finish it up. Now look at this. Actually, before heat treat, I remember to do uh, punch the <coughs> holes in. Actually, I'm just center punching them here. And then I'll go and drill them in with the drill press. It must be some sort of special occasion. I actually remember to put the holes in before I get heat treated. So I don't have to go back and Use a torch to try and get the steel soft enough to be able to drill through it.
gonna go ahead and heat treat it after we've got the holes in the tang. And I'll heat up the tang of it first so it functions as kind of a heat sink and hold some of that heat. And then I'll go through and heat the blade several times. I actually heated it up, I think, three times and let it cool back to black. So that it kind of takes some of the stresses out of it in the thermocycling. Now, this blade did actually warp a little bit, and I think it was because I had a lot more of the springs on one side and a lot more of the, uh, the powdered 1080 on the other side. So I did get a little bit of a warp in the quench, but I think I'll be able to grind it out later. I haven't done that yet, though. You can see that hardening line in the in the blade where I actually hardened up just the blade part of it. Okay, it's been cleaned up a little bit on the blade and um, then it got tempered for a couple hours in the oven. And you can see a little bit of that kind of bronze color that came out on there for our temper color. And now we get to the part where it's just going to be a couple hours of hand sanding. And nobody wants to watch two hours of somebody sitting there and hand sanding, so we're just going to kind of gloss over that a little bit, and y'all are just going to have to use your imagination some. Okay, while it's not a real perfect finish, it doesn't probably need to be for etching. I've still got some deep scratches that I probably should remove, but I'm getting impatient. I want to kind of see what it looks like, so I'm going to degrease it. And we're going to go ahead and put it in some ferric chloride for the first part of etching it. Let's just kind of etch it up onto that. Yeah, one side's going to be a lot more interesting than the other. There's still some finish work to do, but this is probably where I'm going to call it for this video. It wound up being about a five and a quarter inch blade and just over 10 inches overall. Um, you can definitely see all where the, all the little springs were in that canister. Came out with a fairly interesting pattern. Oh, yeah. For a future video, it might be putting on the handle, finishing up everything. And of course, as always, I've still got to make a sheath for it once I get all that done. So, if you want to see how it turns out in the end, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and then you can find out where it goes from here.